so UK travel. First of all, guys, uh, my name's Christian. All yay, I'm the program director of Global State Abroad. I've been the one uh, harassing you through email and all that. So uh, if I ever took uh, too long to respond to you, I apologize. If there was ever time where I didn't answer one of your questions you asked, I apologize. Please ask me tonight, and I'll make sure to answer it, okay? Um, first of all, we're going to have an amazing trip. Both the trips are going to be incredible. We're going to two entirely different parts of the world. Um, if you're going to England and Scotland, it's going to be a little bit cooler. If you're going to Costa Rica and Panama, it's going to be a little bit warmer, a little bit wetter. England and Scotland might be a little bit wet, too. If we don't get rained on while we're there, you weren't really there, okay? So hopefully we'll have nice, nice sunny days every day, but there'll probably be a warm day of uh, raining. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about um, I'm going to talk about the flight itinerary. I'm going to talk about packing. I'm going to talk about pre-trip information, what you need to do, and then we'll briefly run through the itinerary. The itinerary hasn't changed; it's online, so uh, you can just flip through that. Okay. Um, and most importantly, we'll talk about packing, so that way you don't bring a huge six-month suitcase with you because you don't need it. Okay. You're already pointing at someone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. I was going to scroll it from over there on the computer. Okay, guys, so for the, um, yes, London group, Monday, April 25th, you need to be at the Will Rogers World Airport at 9.30 in the morning, okay? That's not awful. That's pretty good. That's doable. Yeah, it's about an hour drive from here. Build in a little bit of cushion, guys, in case something happens along the way, in case you have a flat tire or anything like that, in case you sleep in. But make sure you get there because that will be stressful if you, um, if you have to uh, rush and you're uh, worried about missing your flight. You need to be there at minimum two hours before departure. You guys will get there, and you're going to meet at the gate, okay? So don't wait for everybody in front of American Airlines. Go through security. Um, go through all that. And then um, <clears throat> go read the board. Uh, you'll have your flight time. Uh, you'll have your flight number, excuse me, and I'll tell you exactly which gate you need to go to, okay? These six digits right here in bold are the six letters. PTT, whoa. PTT, why are, can I really do that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. <laughs> they didn't have this one, I was, okay. So PTTYRB, that is your reference code. So if you don't even want to go to the American Airlines counter and you just want to go to the little self kiosk, you put that in there, scan your passport, you're good to go. And uh, you can go directly through security, okay? Any questions yet? No, I'm good? Okay, cool. So uh, flight's gonna be uh, Oklahoma City to Charlotte. Flight time's 11.49 a.m. Um, you're gonna be arriving to Charlotte 3.18. You got a little layover there, two hours, and then uh, Charlotte, overnight flight across the Atlantic, London Heathrow. John Martin and I will be waiting for you, um, very caffeinated and excited to help you um, dive into your first day in London. You guys, that first day, we will not let you sleep, okay? We're going to keep you up until uh, night, and then uh, we'll, you go to bed early that night, but we won't let you sleep during the day because it'll throw off your whole clock. So you just got to ride that whole day out. We'll keep you busy and occupied, lots of coffee breaks, whatever you need. And then, um, and then that night you'll have the best night's rest ever, okay? Um, coming back, you're going to be coming back on Saturday, May 7th. Um, you will leave London at 12 p.m., very nice. So we'll get to the airport around 9 or so. Heathrow is um, quite, uh, it, there's a lot of um, traffic there. It's a very, very busy airport, so we get there a little bit earlier. We also leave a little bit earlier because sometimes, unfortunately, people like to jump in front of the tube on the way to the airport. So um, that can kind of delay everything. I'm serious. So that's why we, we build in that extra cushion to get you there. Hopefully that won't happen yet. Sorry, it's a little dark. Um, no, anyway, you're going to get back to Oklahoma City at 7.30 p.m. Uh, in the evening. So make sure you have your, um, your um, loved ones, friends, whoever, parents picking you up. Um, at the airport, okay? You can provide them the flight time and they can uh, they can use uh, all the different uh, flight trackers and all the different apps to uh, see when you're going to be arriving. And that's the Will Rogers, Oklahoma City Will Rogers Airport, okay? This is just all information. It's obvious. Uh, flight will leave with you if you're late. Make sure to be on time, blah, blah, blah. Now, guys, um, packing, okay? The notice here says, how much can I carry on? I want to encourage you to carry all of your stuff on the plane. You know, for some, some people that might sound absolutely crazy, but I know you can do it, okay? This black bag I have right here, this fits in a carry-on. This is kind of the biggest that you can get in an overhead, okay? Um, all the dimensions are listed in here, so if you're worried about your bag or your uh, suitcase or whatever being um, too big, just get off the tape measure and measure it, okay? This bag, I, I, I'll use this bag for like six-week trips, okay? So you can definitely use a bag this size for a, um, a two-week trip, okay? 
can definitely do it. Whatever you think that you want to pack and bring there, lay it all out, try it on, make sure that you like it. Don't bring everything and then be like, okay, I'm going to decide what I'm going to wear when I'm there. Kind of have options and then pre-decide what you want to wear while you're there. I have a sample packing list, but obviously they'll be different for genders and everything. But um, you guys can um, decide what you're going to wear, plan ahead, don't bring too much, and then whatever you think you're going to bring, cut that in half and then pack that. Yeah? Do we need a backpack or can we bring a carry-on suitcase? Exactly. Great question. Yes, you can bring a, um, a carry-on suitcase, no problem, with wheels and stuff like that. Just remember that a lot of times um, there will be uh, stairs that we'll be taking, um, there will be a cobblestone, there will be things like this. So sometimes that can be annoying if you're rolling your suitcase and it's you know vibrating behind you the whole time and you know, the wheels might pop off or something. I prefer to have the bag on me because um, I can just get up the stairs real quickly, get down, and then I can take it off and I can just put it between my legs while I'm standing there on the, on the tube or the underground, okay? So um, I brought a couple other things to show you as well in this bag. Um, definitely, uh, so when, I, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm traveling, guys, I'll use this, uh, this black bag, and then I have like my, uh, my other bag where I keep all my valuables in, so like this little side bag. You, can, um, you should bring two bags for sure. So um, bring a bigger bag with all your stuff, and you'll leave that back at the hostel in the locker. Lock that nice and up. And then uh, you'll have your other bag. This one's a little bit too big for a day bag, but a little something smaller, a little backpack that you can either wear in the front or a little side bag or something like that. That's the bag that's going to go under your seat, okay? So one goes above you, one goes below you. Okay? Whatever you do, guys, please don't bring a big six-month suitcase, okay? It's unnecessary. You'll take up too much room um, on the tube, and uh, people will uh, people will kind of uh, kind of look at you, um, and they'll be they'll be disturbed. They'll be like, ah, they're coming here with too much stuff, you know? There's, everything's smaller smaller quarters in Europe, guys. Um, everywhere you go, um, the cars are smaller, the rooms are smaller. Uh, this, there's less space, okay? So um, definitely um, pack light. Don't overpack because that's just more stuff that you have to clean when you get back home. And there's a place called Primark um, all over the UK. It's super, super affordable. Um, we, should, we should say cheap. It's very, very cheap, and you get a whole new wardrobe for like 50 bucks. So that might be a best place if you did forget anything. Don't worry. There's plenty of stops along the way where we say, hey, here's that Primark place we were telling about, or here's that Primark place we were telling about. So you guys can, um, you guys can load up on a whole new wardrobe while you're there if you want to. Okay? Um, in here, like I said, here's the dimensions and everything. Check that, okay? Now, the only thing is, if um, with carrying your bag on, if you have liquid medication, for example, or something similar to that um, is over the 3.2 ounces, then um, obviously you're going to have to check that on, okay? Because you're only allowed one quart size bag, and that can be filled with all the different three ounce bottles, okay? Now, if you have liquid medication that's in a lot bigger bottle and you can't break it down to the other bottles, then of course you can check your bag. But um, you, you might run into problems there. One, it might go to London, Ontario. It might go to Canada instead of uh, to London, UK. Or your bag might be delayed, et cetera, and uh, it might delay um, the start of your trip. Or your bag might not arrive um, until a couple days into the trip. Or it might not arrive at all. This does happen quite often. Um, that's why we, we encourage you guys to carry your bags on. Now, at the end of the trip, if you want to um, check your bag on, because you have um, you bought a ton of new clothes or whatever, or what a lot of times the travelers will do, they'll bring an extra bag inside of this bag, and they pack that one full of all the clothes they buy at Primark, and then they check that off. That's entirely up to you. Okay, a lot of people do that. All right. So that's kind of on the way home. Put it in. It doesn't matter if it's delayed because you're coming home, so you have supplies at home. Right. So they say, what are you allowed? You're allowed one big bag. You're allowed. Um, so. I recommend, guys, like don't go buy a new bag if you don't have a bag. Talk to brother, sister, friend, whatever. Say, hey, can I borrow your sports bag or can I borrow your backpacking bag or whatever. If you see yourself like, um, you know, wanting to uh, do more trips like this and things like that, which I guarantee at the end of the trip you'll want to, um, then you might want to look into like uh, getting something, uh, something similar or whatever fits you. And we, we can both, we can give you a lot of recommendations for these type of bags. Um, sling strap duffel bags are awesome. They're great, um, they're easy, they're small, you can move, maneuver it. But this is just an example of like a bigger bag and then like a day pack, okay? I like the color of the purse. You like, I like that's the blue one nice too, choice. yeah, I, uh, that's, that's my, my other bag. I'll show you that one later. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, sample packing list. <laughs> Duffel bag or backpacking bag or additional day pack or handbag, okay? Uh, before you go buy one, um, talk to your friends or go to Ross, TJ Maxx, um, these cheap stores like this, and you can get like a like a sports bag for like 15 bucks, okay? Uh, you can get most of the stuff at those places at Ross, uh, Ross Dress Like a Boss. You can get that um, real, real, real affordably there. Um, you need to bring adequate multi-layer clothing for the duration of the trip, okay? Um, the, uh, we're, the UK trip's 12, uh, 12 13 days. So um, bring adequate clothing for that trip, okay? Um, you know, it's okay to wear things more than once, you know? And you can, it's versatile clothing, things that you can uh, mix and match, all right? Um, you should bring a jacket for sure, especially uh, when we go up to Scotland, especially when we're in the Highlands. Um, it will be chilly. Um, it will be gorgeous, but it will be chilly. And, um, you know, we'll definitely probably see some rain. I was there in March with another group. We didn't see rain at all, which is very rare. Um, but um, don't count on that. Everything can change quickly. So bring, a, bring some kind of jacket, preferably water resistant, okay? A um, couple pairs of pants, some long sleeve shirts, shirts, t-shirts, things that you can layer, take off if it gets hot, put on if it gets cold. Um, evening wear, something to wear out. We're going to show you a little bit of the nightlife if you want to see it. So uh, you guys have opportunities to go on some pub crawls and stuff like that, both in London and in uh, Edinburgh. Uh, the hostel organizes stuff every day of the week. So um, if you do want to go out, bring something to wear out as well. Not mandatory, it's optional. Um, scarf might be too much, but maybe a light scarf. Uh, light gloves, again, might be too much depending on how cold you get, okay? Uh, pajamas, guys, bring appropriate pajamas for a shared room. So you guys will be in like four bed, uh, four bed dorms. So the girls will be in uh, one four bed and the, uh, the guys will be in another four bed. And are there any guys going on the UK trip? <laughs> okay. Never mind. There's no, we'll be all still before. Now the rooms are in suite, okay? So uh, in London, London the rooms are in suite. So you have your own private uh, private bath and uh, private shower in your room. It's very spacious, two bunk beds. Um, in Edinburgh, uh, the rooms are there's multiple um, there's multiple bathrooms on uh, each floor, and uh, they're cleaned multiple times per day. It's super super clean, very nice place. You guys will love where we stay. Um, we, we put a lot of research into all the places that we stay to give you the best vibe and um, also clean, safe, uh, very well-researched locations. So we know you'll be happy with those. Um, you need to bring uh, flip-flops for showering. If it's not my shower, I wear flip-flops. That's just my rule. Um, durable, multi-purpose shoes. Guys, we're going to be walking a lot. We uh, recorded it uh, last, uh, last trip so we could give you factual information. We were averaging – hey, man. You told me it wasn't going to go to sleep. Okay, it's still going. We have, I didn't think it was. I'm sorry, I don't know. Um, we were averaging uh, 10 to 13 miles per day, okay, in London. So from beginning of the day to the end of the day. So if you haven't started walking yet, you might want to start start doing <clears throat> doing a little bit of walking. And uh, whatever shoes you are bringing with you, make please make sure that they're broken in, okay? Don't bring brand new walking shoes over there because you'll get really bad blisters, okay? Um, quick dry shower towel, very important. Uh, the places where we're staying, they uh, do provide towels, but sometimes they uh, run out of towels, or sometimes they have an issue with the with the laundry service or whatever. So bring a quick dry towel just in case. The reason I say quick dry is because if you bring a big thick towel, it's going to take too long to dry. It'll smell like wet dog mildew uh, halfway through the trip, and you don't want that. So get a quick dry towel. You can pick those up at many places. Uh, a couple, you know, like five, ten bucks. You can get a nice one at Academy, and uh, it's dry within a few minutes. Okay. Um, you need to bring a reusable water bottle. The water is paddable over there, so instead of having to buy plastic water bottles all the time and uh, just continually buying plastic water bottles and wasting your money on that, you can just use the uh, tap water. It's clean. And get a reusable water bottle, something like this, or a Nalgene bottle, whatever you have. You can get these anywhere. Um, it'll save you a lot of money, and you can use that money for uh, more fun stuff. Um, combo lock or padlock. Um, you're going to have lockers under your, um, under your bed. Uh, big lockers, so uh, bring some kind of combo lock or padlock to lock up your stuff, okay? Uh, for passports and these kind of things, we put those in the safe uh, down at the reception, okay? Um, camera, you definitely want to be able to document your entire trip, so bring a camera. Uh, if you want to keep a travel journal, I like to do so. Keep a travel journal. Wet wipes and hand sanitizer, I think they're two of the best things in the entire world, especially if you're traveling and you get off the plane, you just feel gross, a little wet wipe bath, you're good to go. Um, some hand sanitizer if you want to get some good street food, didn't have time to wash your hands after you got off the tube. A little hand sanitizer, there you go, dive in. 
um, travel size toiletries. There's a whole section at Target, Walmart, Walgreens, wherever you go, whole sections dedicated to travel size toiletries. So you can go there and get the empty bottles and fill them up with your own products that you have at home, or you can buy the ones that are already uh, prepackaged and ready. Um, these will be the ones that go in your quart size bag, okay? Um, small trash can liner bags, so similar like this white one over here in that trash can, um, that's so you can separate dirty clothes from clean clothes, dry clothes from wet clothes. Um, and then uh, you might want some Ziploc bags to keep your um, electronics in, like a gallon size Ziploc bag. Keep your electronics in in case uh, there's like a lot of rain one day and it completely soaks through your bag. At least you know that stuff's safe. Okay? Um, black and white copies of your passport. You don't need color ones. Bring a couple extra. You can keep one in one bag, one in the other bag, and one somewhere else I think, just I think in case Dr. you lose your passport. I think Dr. Brown is requiring them that they give her one. Perfect. So Even better. Yeah. It. Just in case you lose your passport, guys, um, it's much easier to get a new one. We'll have to run you over to the embassy. Thanks. Um, it'll be much easier if you already have a copy of your original. Okay? Um, school ID. If you have a school ID, bring it because you can get amazing discounts everywhere. Um, that's entrances to venues. That's uh, discounts on food. That's discounts on even pints of beer if you want beer. Or if you don't want beer, they'll give you discounts on soda. Okay? Um, I assume everyone here is over 18, right? Cool. So I was like, okay, you can't come if you're not. Um, no, I'm joking. Uh, but uh, yeah, over 18, you guys are legal to drink there, okay? But let's be responsible. Don't be that tourist, all right? And remember, traffic goes the wrong way, so if you're a little too tipsy and you don't realize it, you might step out in front of a double-decker bus, and that'll be the end. So uh, don't, uh, let's not do that. US UK electrical socket adapter. Extremely important. Ladies, we're going to talk, and well, guys too. If, well, there's no guys going on the UK trip, so ladies. Um, hair straighteners and blow dryers. The hostel's worst friend. They purchased all of their own uh, hair dryers because they got tired of having to um, call the electric man and replace all of the, uh, um, the electrical sockets throughout the building. This is an old Victorian mansion, okay? So it's very expensive to have electrical work done in there. And um, for some reason, even if you have a converter or not, hair dryers and hair strainers just suck way too much energy, and um, it always blows all the power out. Okay, so what do we have here? Do you get, can you guys see, see what that is, looks like? Yeah, so this is the UK uh, adapter, okay? Your plug is not going to plug into the wall in, um, over there. If it does plug into the wall over there, you definitely don't want to attach anything to it, okay? Because that'll be an expensive fireworks show, so don't do that. Um, this will not convert the electricity, okay? This will only allow you to plug your device in. Most modern electronics, like your guys' iPhones and stuff like that, already have a built-in converter in the charger, okay? Um, if, it, uh, if it doesn't say that it can handle 110 to 220 on it, then um, you're going to need a converter, okay? For $8.99 on Amazon. $8.99 on Amazon. There we go. What will we do with that Amazon, right? And they probably deliver the same day. They do have the same day. I don't even know how they do that. It's amazing. Drones. Yeah. <laughs> Drones. Uh, but yeah, guys, so like, uh, these are great. I mean, this has every continent on it. Um, so like, um, hopefully you guys will continue to travel and travel the world. That's what we want you to do. So, um, you know, invest in one of these, eight ninety nine, right? These guys cost like two bucks, okay? You can get these. Radio Shack, Target, all the other places I mentioned should have these, okay? Um, so, we have 110. They have 220. Okay, so whenever you plug in the wall over there, that's ours. The electricity over there is too powerful, voltage too high, it's gonna fry your device, okay? So before you plug it in, make sure you read that it can handle 110 to 220. Costa Rica, Panama travelers, raise your hands real quick, so just give an eye. Same exact voltage, same exact plugs. Good to go, don't need to worry about anything. All right, and then one last reminder, no liquids over 3.4 ounces in the carry-on, okay? Okay, so, very important, um, travel checklist. I'm going to send you an email tonight with uh, all of this information, okay? And then I'm also going to send you a very important reminder that I need a photocopy or scan copy of your medical form, okay? I'm gonna, that's going to be attached. 
I need you to fill that out for me. And uh, you can fill it out online if you want. And I need you to send it back to me. That's completely confidential. We don't get into it unless there's an emergency. Okay? After the trip, we destroy it. Okay? Or we delete it. Trash it electronically. Um, but we need you to send that to us in the case of an emergency. We need to know of uh, any um, pre-existing conditions that we need to know about. Please tell us. Any kind of allergies, we need to know that. Allergies to medication, we need to know that, okay? Anything that you feel that we should know about that's confidential, it just stays between us and the staff, we need to know about that in case of emergency. We have had to take people to the hospital in London multiple times. Thankfully, um, in London, they have global health care. They didn't pay a dime, and they have one of the best health care systems in the entire world, and uh, they seriously didn't pay a dime. So we've had, um, we've had a girls that have had to have surgery while they were there, pre-existing condition, flared up on their study abroad trip. Luckily, it was like towards the last day, so it was good. Um, but um, yeah, so you guys really, um, like, please do fill that and send that to us. It's mandatory. Also, there will be the release form. You guys have to uh, sign the release form. Um, trust us, uh, we have repeat travelers here. We have repeat professors here. Um, we're going to do a good job with you. Okay, that's, that's our job. We're going to make sure you're 100% satisfied. Um, passport. If you haven't gotten your passport yet, you need to do it ASAP. Like, you'll have to get it expedited, okay? And they'll cost more. But is there anyone here that hasn't done their passport? Everybody has a passport? Yes, great. All right. Um, very important, guys. If you are going to the UK, you need to notify your bank that you're going to be out of the country from April 25th to May 7th. Please do that. Otherwise, they're going to block your card, and they're going to be standing there at the ATM, and you're going to say, my card doesn't work. So did you call the bank? Um, and then it'll be typically, no. It's like, OK, we'll go call them later. Here, I'll, I'll lend you 20 pounds for now. And then we go on. But guys, uh, please do that. Otherwise, they freeze your car, card because they think it's fraud. Okay. So uh, contact your bank. Let them know that you're going to be out of the country through those dates. Let them know where you're going to be. Make sure that they understood to put a note on your account. And then you're good to go. Okay. Um, a lot of people ask about, um, you know, uh, should I bring over American cash and, um, and um, go, go convert it or uh, go exchange it? Absolutely not. That's just throwing money down the drain. Okay. They have very high commission rates. They're making a lot of money off you. You are much better off using your debit card while you're there and withdrawing local currency directly from the ATMs. That's the first stop we make when we pick you up at Heathrow. We take you directly over the ATMs. You get local currency out. We'll give you sample budgets and tell you, you know, kind of a suggestion of what you might need for the first few days and stuff like that, okay? But um, don't, uh, do, please, please, please don't bring over a lot of U.S. cash and um, want to go exchange it. Two reasons. One, you might lose your money, um, you might get pickpocketed, and then all your spending cash is gone. And the second reason is you're losing a lot of money, and we don't want you to lose money. We want you to be able to use that money for fun stuff, okay? So um, please don't bring U.S. cash over in exchange, okay? You need pounds, okay? Last, the last trip we had spring break, they came over, some people came over with euros. I said, no, no, no. You need pounds in the U.K., okay? Sterling. So, um, Luckily, uh, the dollar is strong right now, and it's the closest it's been to the pound, um, like, I don't know, maybe in the last, like, 10 years. So it's a great time to go over there. Um, it's, 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 you definitely get a lot more value for your money. But um, I don't recommend going and uh, buying uh, pounds from your bank here and taking them with you. It's the same thing. You might lose the cash, and they're charging you a high commission, okay? Get it directly out of the ATM. A lot of banks... Uh, will uh, do your research. A lot of banks will reimburse you for your international transactions. A lot of them won't even charge you for the international transactions. If your bank does charge you, it's typically anywhere between three and five dollars per uh, transaction. So you don't want to pull out just twenty. You don't want to pull out just twenty pounds. You um, you want to pull out you know maybe like eighty pounds or something. Something that can sustain you and last you for another four days or so. Something like that. Okay, um, and we'll and we'll help you out throughout. That's what we're there for. Um, adequate money for the trip this is completely dependent on your spending habits. Okay, you can do it for less, but that's just like a rough average. Like you might want anywhere between you know 200 and 300, 400, 500 is very high. It depends on you. I'm going to give you examples of uh, meal costs. Okay, um, during the days now we have communal kitchens wherever we stay, so we can do group meals and we can eat. Uh, and we're going to have we're going to the included meals. You're going to love you. Pick whatever you, want, whatever you want off the menu, huge meals, quality food. 
Um, so that's where you can really get that good like pub gr pub grub, good food like that typical UK uh, style fish and chips, shepherd's pie, bangers and mash. What are you looking for? Haggis, neeps and tatties, you know all that good stuff. Uh, for sure, you have to have that when you're in Scotland, definitely. Um, <laughs> if you know. Um, but um, but for the other meals, I highly recommend um, either getting like really good street food. London's super super international, so you can get like awesome street food for like four or five pounds, or um, you know make some sandwiches, take them out for the day, and then in the evening we do like group meals together. It ends up being like one pound each. You know, including like a glass of wine if you want it as well. And so it's like a great way to save money, guys. Okay, a great way to save money. Obviously, you don't want to do that every night. You're there to go out and explore. But if you are on a budget, talk to me. I'll tell you how to do it on the cheap because I'm a very frugal traveler. So I'll tell you how to do it on the cheap. Okay? Um, shirt materials for professors. If there are, are any, make sure you take care of those. Um, bags packed within airline regulations. Use the packing list. And then, um, Please pack light, follow the recommendations, guys. You'll thank us at the end, I promise you. And uh, you need to provide your loved ones the contact information down here below, okay? That's where we are and where we're staying, okay? There's also my number. Please only have them call that in the case of an emergency. Um, and uh, a lot of times we have travelers that say, hey, don't contact me uh, during the trip. I'll find out about it when I get home. A lot of people like to do that because, you know, they said, hey, I worked hard to go on this trip. I don't want it. I don't want to be disturbed during the trip. That's entirely up to you. That's depending on your mentality, okay? Um, yeah, and then guys, uh, uh, one of the frequently asked questions we get a lot, this is the, I just want to show you Astor Hyde Park, it's glorious. So this is the Victorian Mansion here, yeah, it's like eight floors up. This is the nicest neighborhood in London, this is South Kensington. This is the poshest area, there'll be Maseratis, Ferraris, Lamborghinis driving around, and we're at a backpacker's hostel right there, so it's, we're definitely like, kind of like, oh my gosh, this is too nice. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. The vibe's great. Hyde Park, you just look out the right. It's uh, seriously 20 yards right there, Hyde Park. So um, primo location. You can't get better than that. Uh, this is the upstairs living room area, fireplace. They show, they've got a big drop down. They show movies there every night. Every night of the week, there's something going on there, different activities, games, organized events. What's the difference between a hostel and a hotel, guys? Just in the words. Anybody? Hostel, hotel. S. S. Yeah, I didn't even know what the S stands for. Did you say yes? You got a guess? No? Social. Social. That's the difference between a hostel and a hotel. Hostel is made for social environment. There's going to be travelers from all corners of the world there. You're going to meet people from everywhere. They're going to share invaluable advice with you. Um, I've had a lot of my travelers who have, not a lot, I've had three, which is still a lot, who have met their current spouse at a hostel during a trip, right? That's incredible. Right? And they stayed in touch, they went back, they did their own backpacking adventure somewhere, fell, you know, wanderlust in love, and then uh, now they're married. You know? I don't know how long it'll go for, but they got married, yeah, so. Um, this is an example, uh, look how happy she is, you see, isn't she happy? This is an example, the bump beds, you guys can fight over uh, uh, bottom and top and all that. Um, and then downstairs below this is the uh, industrial kitchen and another huge eating area, and uh, it's very, very cool, you guys like it. Now. The only downside is that there's no elevator, okay? So that's why you need to pack light, because you might be on the fifth floor. And if you have to go all the way up and all the way down, you better make sure you didn't forget anything downstairs, okay? <laughs> or, or you don't need it, okay? Um, and then uh, itinerary. Quickly, I'm going to go over the itinerary because it's nothing, nothing has changed, okay? Um, you'll arrive the first day. We don't do a whole lot the first day. The first day is orientation. Get comfortable with the guys. Get comfortable with South Kensington area and stuff like that. We don't want to put too much information on you the first day because you won't be able to retain it. You guys are going to be tired, okay? By the end of the day, you've been awake for, you know, off and on for about 30, 36 hours, okay? So we don't do any crazy walking tours the first day. Just orientation, okay? Um, we'll go have a good dinner that night. Uh, the next day, Westminster walking tour, free time afternoon. Guys, every day you're going to have a lot of free time. We'll do something educational, culture in the morning, afternoon, free time, explore, We'll give you a lot of advice, too, if you want our recommendations, okay? Um, next day, we do another South Thames walk tour. Every day, we're exploring different neighborhoods, different districts, and different markets, okay? Um, free day, free day. You guys have the London Pass. So if you want to go see the Chelsea Arsenal Stadium, if you guys want to go see um, Tower, Tower of London, if you guys want to go see um, the other million things that are included in the London Pass, 
this, these are the two days to do it. Just go crazy, go wild, and just go from one to one. Make, make use of that pass, okay? That gets you access to many, many venues, okay? Um, and then we're going to Oxford. You guys are going to go to Oxford. We'll spend a day there. Uh, Harry Potter fans, anyone? Oxford, Edinburgh, those are like the two capitals of Harry Potter world. And um, I think that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Harry Potter's buried in Westminster Abbey. I'm not sure. I think so. Right? <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, but, and then, guys, uh, we're headed up to Edinburgh. We're taking the train. It's gorgeous. You're going to see lots of sheep and, you know, um, beautiful green rolling hills and lots of men in skirts and kilts and whatnot. And, um, and then we arrive in Edinburgh. Beautiful gothic city. It's, uh, it's gorgeous. Um, very, very beautiful city. Um, much smaller than London. Um, but uh, very, very beautiful. No, no tube, no underground. And uh, so uh, we'll arrive in Edinburgh. We'll get checked in. Uh, we'll do a little orientation. Get you guys guess. We're right under Edinburgh Castle. Hopefully you'll be in one of the rooms where uh, you have the view. There's a couple rooms that have a view of it. That's gorgeous. But if not, you can go outside and just look right there. Um, Prima location right on the Royal Mile. It's perfect. And um, so, yeah, we'll spend the, the first day in Edinburgh. And the next day we'll do a walking tour in Edinburgh with Billy. And then... Um, and then you guys have free time the rest of the day. And then uh, the uh, and in the next two days, we're going to be doing a, uh, a tour of the Highlands. So uh, we'll visit castles. We'll visit um, gorgeous uh, mountains and valleys. And uh, we'll go to um, a whiskey distillery and uh, lots of fun stuff up there. Uh, we'll go to Loch Ness. You guys can, uh, if you want, you guys can go out on a boat out there on Loch Ness and explore and look for uh, Nessie. Um, okay, I just found him. Yeah? We're done. So. Okay. It was, on, it was on the internet today. Perfect. Yeah, what kind, what website was that? I don't know. He's a big, drunk-looking, hairy guy. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> they found a floating night. And then, um, so we'll spend a few days in the Highlands, uh, chilling off, and then um, we'll uh, go back to Edinburgh, and then uh, we'll take a train back to London, and um, we'll have our farewell dinner. There will be tears, and um, yeah, we'll say goodbye. We'll take you guys to the airport in the morning the next day, and that is the UK trip. Uh, briefly, there's gonna be a lot more that I didn't cover there, but uh, we'll surprise you with all that stuff. Okay? Any questions about UK? Yes. Anything? Nobody. No questions at all. Yes. What's the weather going to be like? Great question. So um, totally unpredictable. You just you look it up. Average temperatures, May. Big question mark. No, it's. Um, I would say during the days, 70s, um, 70s. Uh, there's been a lot of sunshine, so you might actually get to wear sunglasses. Um, in the evenings, you might need just a, a thin little jacket, something like that. Um, but uh, that could all change very quickly. What I would recommend you guys doing is uh, looking um, looking at the average weather forecast, like during um, May, April, that time, and kind of determine on there and decide what you want to bring, okay? Um, I was going to say, one thing I didn't cover, um, which I wanted to cover, was uh, data plans, roaming plans, things like this. In my opinion, you don't need it, okay? Don't get it. I don't like to get it. It's expensive, okay? We have Wi-Fi where we're staying, good Wi-Fi, uh, multiple routers throughout the building. So use free, use free, all the free apps that you can use. So, you know, there's WhatsApp, there's Viber, there's the Facebook call now, there's FaceTime, there's Skype. There's a million different ways to call people for free now. So use the Wi-Fi and stuff like that. If you really, like, um, if you're, um, if you need to get in touch with people and they don't have access to internet and they only have a, uh, you know, a landline or a phone like that, then, you know, you might want to look at maybe a, a texting plan or something. But I can't give you any advice whatsoever on data plans because I never use it. I always get a local SIM uh, wherever I'm going, you know. You guys don't need to get a local SIM while you're there unless you really want to if you're going to make, like, a lot of local friends there and, like, keep all their numbers. But I would just use your normal phones. Those are great for photos. Those are great for alarm clocks. Those are great for calculators. Those are great for uh, the Wi-Fi. I would use those. And uh, I would just uh, turn, I would put it on, um, I would turn the roaming off and deny access for the duration of your trip, okay? That's my advice for you guys. Save the bill, keep it down. Whatever you do, uh, make sure you turn roaming and stuff off because that would be outrageous. It'll kill your battery too, It'll kill real your battery. quick. So um, the Wi-Fi, like I said, guys, and there's Wi-Fi everywhere, absolutely everywhere. At the hostel, at the coffee shops. On the tube, on the underground, there's Wi-Fi. I mean, there's seriously Wi-Fi everywhere. So, and they have something called the cloud. Um, the, it's basically there's Wi-Fi throughout the entire city that's sponsored by O2. So you just set up an email account with them. They give you a password, and you can log into that all the time. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions, guys? UK questions? Yes. So you were at 
Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that's a, you could bring like a little pocket size uh, umbrella. Those are good. Yeah, or just a little light jacket, a little waterproof jacket. Either or. Yeah, so it, depends, it depends on you, whatever one you want. I think last time I had a little, uh, a little black, a little black umbrella, and it didn't rain. So uh, I was like, great. Uh, they always have one. Bring it. It doesn't rain, you know. And then um, vice versa. But uh, yeah, that, that's up to you. I, I would make that decision on on, uh, on your own. I'm not bringing a rain jacket um, uh, because. Um, well, I didn't bring a rain jacket last time because I had my shell because it was a lot colder. It was in March, and so that was waterproof. But uh, yeah, your rain jacket would probably be good. Yeah. And then, uh, is that a hood? Um, no, I don't have rain coat. Oh, you don't have rain coat? I don't have an umbrella either. So. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> don't, don't get anything like too big. You know, not one of those big like yellow, like um, not one of those like sailor, like you know, fisherman sailor rain coats. You know, something like thin and small. You know, nothing too big. And then um, maybe a little umbrella as well. You can get all that stuff at, I'm telling you guys, like Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, that's split those places. You get all this stuff for super cheap, okay? Um, anybody else? Questions, guys? Throw it out. This is the time. What if we want to go to Stonehenge? Yes, very good. I can get you a deal, Stonehenge. We did it on the last trip. Um, and it also includes a bath, uh, so you can do that on your free day. And that was 38 pounds for the whole day. So yeah, we can arrange that for you if you want to do that on your free day. Absolutely, yeah, we can do that. Let us know in advance and we'll uh, make sure we get it because sometimes they book up quickly. Yeah. So guys, anything like that you want to do, if you want to do a day trip to uh, Stonehenge or to Bath or to, uh, nothing too far, don't go like, like, some people are like, hey, can I go to Denmark for the day? It's like, no. <laughs> yes, you can, you can, but don't, bad idea. Um, Paris is like kind of the, the, the furthest that you should go, okay? And that's still, Paris is one of those cities that requires like at least a week, you know, similar, similar to London. Uh, so it's like, um, it's like, you know, you can do it in a day, but, you know, hopefully you'll go back and do a whole French trip or something, you know, instead of like just going and taking off a few things. But if you want to do it, let us know because you need to book your Eurostar ASAP um, because every day it gets more expensive as you get closer. Okay. Any other questions, guys? I know there's more out there. Yeah. What about I don't know where that is. It's it's the Downton Abbey house. It's, <laughs> okay. It's, it's not. I think it's like within an hour away from London. Oh, it's sh definitely doable. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Um, that'll be a John and Martin question. Yeah. Anytime I don't have an answer, that's a John and Martin question. They're the uh, they're the local guys, you know. So just always ask them. Yeah. No, I'm joking. You can ask me questions too. But if I don't know, I'll, I'll grab them for you. But yeah, they can definitely uh, help you arrange that. There'll be some kind of trainer bus that goes out there. It's that close, definitely. Come on, another one. Yeah. Oh, um, theater tickets. Theater tickets, yes. We can get you uh, discount theater tickets. Uh, no need to book in advance. Um, a lot of times, uh, it's very rare that they sell out of uh, all of the seats, unless it's a big show, like uh, Book of Mormon, for example. You couldn't get a seat for like, I think they were out of like a year, and you couldn't get uh, seats. But um, for all the other stuff that they've had on for quite some time, or um, if you're going to see like any of the dramas or anything like that. Um, you can do uh, day of tickets, and you can get super discount with very nice seats. Um, John and Martin are both professional actors. Um, they're they're in the theater industry, so they can get you. Uh, they can uh, provide you a lot of recommendations for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I highly recommend, guys. Um, one evening, uh, if you'd like to, to go see a, a West End performance or something. Yeah, for like 20, 20, 25, 20, 25 pounds, you can see a really, really good show. And like, if you haven't seen a professional. Um, uh, theater performance before. London is one of the best places, other than New York City. Those are the two best places to see a uh, theater performance. Okay. And if you guys have to with the pass, you can also go check out the the remodel of the uh, the Globe Theater as well. The original burned. Okay. Question. Oh, no, sorry, I just got excited about the Globe. Oh, you guys saw the Globe? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, any other questions, guys? Yeah. I, I have absolutely never traveled. I've never even seen the ocean. Not a problem. So, um, like, what to expect in the airport? I haven't flown since before 9 11. So. What to expect in the airport? Yes. The airport will be very smooth. Um, you'll arrive. You, um, I would recommend, um, since since you haven't flown in quite some time, just go directly to the American Airlines counter, give them your passport, give them that, that six digit reference code at the top of here, and then they'll give you your boarding passes. Uh, we'll get there one day. And then keep your boarding passes with you. Yeah. And then uh, you're going to proceed through security. 
And then after you through security, there'll be a big screen. You'll see American Airlines flight going to Charlotte, the same time as yours. And the gate number should be printed on your boarding pass, but not always. And there'll be staff around to help you. Just go show them and say, where's this? You know, and then they'll say, go to there. And then you just go there and wait. You board the plane. Um, there'll be a connector flight. And then uh, there'll be some snacks, a little drink. And then the long flight over, they're going to feed you properly. And they'll give you uh, other drinks and stuff like that. And then, um, and then yeah, then you come out. You land, you get off the plane, um, you'll have your luggage already, and then um, you're going to follow the exit, exit, exit. You'll get to the uh, border control. They'll uh, stamp your passport. They're going to ask you uh, where you're staying, so you'll have a little slip that you fill out on the plane. And then you just put London, ask for Hyde Park, okay? Put that on the slip. Good to go. And then we'll be waiting for you outside if you won't miss us. OKC's okay, airport's the easiest airport ever. So yeah. it's like. OKC's okay, Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah. Build in a little cushion, okay? Get there early so you can relax and get a little uh, little drink or something to eat before. My, my worst fear is being lost in the airport. Like Can't do it here. <laughs> yeah, no, no, exactly. It's just you, you'll be with your group once you get through the okay. security. Yeah. Any other UK questions? I do need to talk about the study. Go for it. Um, so my name is Zoe Brown. I'm Dr. Brenda Brown's daughter. She's unable to be here at my grandma's cell today. So she, so she does apologize, but I'm here in her place. Is anybody here taking independent study for a North Scott? Okay. okay, so there are some requirements for it, okay? Um, <clears throat> you have to go on the trip, that's fine. Uh, you have to keep a daily writing journal. You have to write in a journal every single day. You need to keep a photo journal, which is not going to be hard. You guys should be taking pictures and everything. Uh, you also need to choose a place or a theme to research, and you'll be doing an oral report over that. It will be of the class during the trip so you if you want to have that prepared before you leave which i encourage you to do because you're going to want to be paying attention to the sightseeing and not having a ride with student fee this is a really simple class and you get a lot of credits for it so it's like the most credits they've ever offered for an independent study and it's five five class credits so if you have to sign up for it i encourage you to do that hmm? uh i'm taking mm -hmm. it i'll take your um, money just pay me also your passport so my mom would like for you to send her a picture of your passport in case of emergency you can either email it to her or you can drop it by her office she probably won't be there tomorrow but if you could drop it off like on that bookshelf in her office i'll go by i'll pick it up because she really needs that copy just for your safety okay um i also have a list here i need you guys to fill out emergency contact information who you can contact in case you guys get hurt or arrested <laughs> or um, if you need to know my uh, the fax number for Dr. Brown, just let me know. I've got it with me, um, and it is critical that you are there two hours before minimum before your flight. But you don't want to stress about that. Particular. It's like the worst thing in the world. I have traveled. I've traveled with Christian, and it's also she has two rules. One of the rules is to keep a name of the place you're staying and an address because you can get lost. First night in San Jose, my mom got broken away from me somehow with half of the group and we, I was left a Christian, he got me home. <laughs> I was completely without my mom, freaked me out. So just know where you're staying and be aware of your surroundings so you can get back home because that's how they got home. It's just one of the best sites that they ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and then uh, pack light for sure. You're going to be bringing lots of souvenirs home, lots of pills you're home. So just pack really light if you have a lot of room, okay? Other than that, if you have any other questions, you Question: I've traveled quite a bit, and here a couple times. We're obviously the answers. For sure. Thank you, Zoe. And um, yeah, guys, we'll have a little survival uh, sheet for you with your oyster cards um, when you arrive. Your little it'll be a little laminated uh, survival sheet already um, stuffed in your your oyster is basically like your transportation card. It'll be like your passport around London. It'll get you in and out of the tube and the double decker buses. We'll have that survival sheet already in there for you. So with, with our numbers and the place where we stay and all that ready. Um, last thing, I almost forgot. I need to do this uh, 